about uh, green finance in Russia, about the existing infrastructure and the perspectives of the sector. Maxim? Uh, thank you very much, uh, dear colleagues. Uh, I'm happy to be here today. Uh, I'll try to uh, present, uh, to say greeting in, Fra in French, uh, bonjour, uh, mon colleagues. Uh, but, uh, you know, my um, French is terrible, so I'll continue in English. Thank you very much, uh, Lena and my uh, preceders for um, uh, giving a very good uh, picture of Russian economy. Uh, following the idea that we should always remember cucumbers, it seems to me it's very um, logical that we turn to the green topic. And uh, we will uh, try to discuss today uh, the uh, situation with green finance in Russia. Uh, it seems to me I managed to switch my screen. So uh, this, um, uh, this report would be uh, shorter than uh, one from my colleagues because, you know, uh, Russia is um, uh, staying still behind the leaders in green finance industry. We all know that uh, global um, global um, green market is uh, growing with rather high speed, and we know that um, and we know that um, uh, global amount of outstanding green bonds today is about 807 uh, uh, 870 uh, uh, billion uh, billion uh, United States dollars, and the amount of uh, green bonds which are uh, designed to finance ecologically friendly projects is growing year from year. Uh, if we look at Russia, uh, the figures are not very impressive. We have only six uh, outstanding issues uh, for green bonds uh, valued like 7 billion rubles. This is like $100 million. Uh, should we be disappointed? I think no, because uh, the topic uh, in Russia started just uh, last year. And we see that uh, for the uh, year that already passed, and uh, given the situation with coronavirus crisis, uh, we see a lot of uh, issuers who are extremely interested in uh, issuing green bonds. Uh, we see that uh, a Russian um, uh, development institution, which is Vnyashikanom Bank, uh, has already started a huge amount of work uh, designed for creation of national standards for green bonds. They are in line with uh, best uh, global practice. They are using mostly the ICMA uh, standards for green bonds uh, verif verif uh, verification. Uh, the taxonomy of projects is uh, as strict as possible. If we look at, for example, China's um, experience where a lot of projects which have a very, very strange ecological impact uh, were labeled green. Uh, we have nothing compared to it in Russia. Only the most uh, eco ecologically efficient projects are considered green. And we see that uh, market is starting to, de to develop. Uh, uh, for instance, uh, we have even uh, Compared to other uh, regular, to other um, to other territories, to other regions, we have some kind of state support for green mar uh, for for green market development. For instance, if a company uh, implements a technology which is best in uh, best in global practice, which which is definitely uh, designed to improve ecological situation and ecological influence that this company pro, uh, has on the uh, surrounding territory, uh, it could issue green bonds and the coupon uh, should be uh, refinanced by the Ministry of um, Industry. And the uh, compensation could be uh, up to 70 to 90 percent, which makes um, financing of green project extremely uh, interesting for Russian uh, heavy industry. Uh, yet this process was started just last year, so we have a uh, few examples, but still we see a lot of a lot of uh, industrial companies who are very interested in the development of this uh, kind of financing. Uh, moreover, what we see, we see that um, international investors are uh, very keen to invest in green projects in Russia. For instance, we had an example last year when Russian railways, uh, the Russian uh, railway monopoly 
uh, issued uh, 500 million uh, dollars uh, green bonds, uh, uh, and uh, the interest for uh, these um, these uh, type of financial instrument was so huge that uh, there was oversubscription three times which resulted in a huge de uh, decrease uh, of um, coupon rate from 2.5 to 2.2% uh, per percent. I don't understand. This is not like the topic that is interesting uh, to in the potential investors, but uh, this shows uh, how market is expecting Russian companies to come uh, to uh, green bond markets and to start issuance because uh, we have uh, as my colleagues already told, uh, the state budget uh, has suffered greatly from both uh, COVID situation, from uh, the reduction of um, commodities prices, especially oil prices. So uh, all the state projects uh, which were con uh, connected with ecology, uh, which was uh, valued of about one point one one hundred and fifty billion dollars. Uh, they all uh, have uh, today problems with financing. And the only way to finance it is like the issuance of green bonds and attraction of international investors in uh, green projects. Uh, moreover, uh, the Vneshkanom Bank, which I've already told you about, who is like leading, uh, who, who is holding a leading role in development of the conditions of the methodologies, is itself expecting to invest like 300 uh, billion rubles which is kind of, uh, I, I'm betting at calculation, about $40 billion, sorry, just um, $4 billion, so sorry. Uh, so um, to invest uh, in green projects within the next uh, several years. So uh, we're, um, uh, we're like standing right now at the beginning of the great wave of green projects which should be um, which would be financed with green bonds in Russia, and uh, why uh, why we are here, why our rating agency is here uh, today. We see that uh, for um, getting the label uh, for getting the label of green, uh, you have just to comply with four simple rules: just have a good strategy, uh, try to in, uh, invest in uh, ecologically friend friendly project. Uh, invest all the money raised into this project and give good reporting. That's all you need. And uh, the result is given is the verification with green bond principle. Uh, and most um, verificators in this country, and by the way, not only this country, but globally, they just give the answer yes or no. Uh, today, this is enough for investors to be sure that they are investing money properly. But we do understand that with the increasing number of uh, green verifications, with the increasing number of uh, green uh, bond issues, uh, issues, there would be some incentive uh, for, um, uh, for some uh, companies, for some groups of interest to manipulate these figures and try uh, and uh, uh, some kind of um, uh, attempts to um, say that just regular business ideas, for example, increasing of the capacity of the plant, uh, should be verified as green. This is called greenwashing. And uh, expecting this to happen, we started to um, uh, specify our uh, verifications with uh, green bond assessment. We not only give you uh, the verification, we not just say yes or no, we say yes, and the level of green, uh, assess green uh, assessment here is like green bond three, which means that actually the, the project is green, but there are some issues which make us think that uh, some of the best practices could be violated. Or for example, the, process, uh, the project is like green bond four, and this means it's not compliant with green bond principles, but anyway, it is uh, having some kind of attributes allowing uh, uh, us to consider that it is going to Finance uh, ecologically friendly, friendly projects. So uh, in this in this uh, in this situation, we think that uh, ACRA's uh, ACRA's view, ACRA's competence would be very useful uh, for investors in future when they have the, they will have to uh, choose between uh, ecologically friendly projects. Uh, for now, uh, the verification is okay, but we do understand that in future that will change. Uh, the similar situation we see uh, with social bond ma markets, 
uh, it is the other project uh, of um, uh, sustainable development mar finance markets. We do understand that with the development of COVID situation, uh, there are many uh, bonds which are aimed for financing of medical services or like uh, with help to um, some, uh, some groups of people who suffered from uh, the situation uh, from ecological or from, from uh, economical or um, medical, uh, medical issues. So uh, this is uh, quite similar to green bonds market, uh, but it, it is uh, concentrated on social projects. The same here we do, we do not just give the verification, we just give verification with the assessment, which is, in our view, very important for choosing between projects, because uh, in future we would see too much projects uh, labeled green or social, and investors would, be, uh, would have to be very careful uh, choosing between them. And um, the last thing that uh, about green finance that we w would like to introduce today would, would be the uh, ESG score that our company has introduced just. And uh, the idea here is that uh, we have developed, uh, I would not say state of art, uh, but I would say kind of a very sophisticated uh, methodology, which is based on huge number of uh, observations of real companies in the world. As far as I understand, there were like 60,000 uh, uh, 60, uh, companies uh, for which we have collected uh, data on their emissions, on their ecological um, influence, on their social programs, on their car, uh, ty types of corporate governance. And based on this um, uh, information, we have uh, developed a globally, uh, globally applicable uh, methodology which would allow um, to, uh, um, to understand what is the social and ecological and governance impact of any entity globally uh, and especially in Russia. We do understand this would be a very big issue uh, taking uh, into consideration that European Union is going to introduce um, uh, carbon taxes next year. As far as we understand, uh, that would be a big issue for Russian exporters to Europe. And one of the answers uh, how to um, deal with it is uh, preparation of high quality uh, uh, ESG uh, scores ratings, which would be uh, identifying all the aspects of the, uh, of the uh, impact that the company has. So in our, in our model, uh, there would be uh, all the uh, necessary um, topics covered. There would be waste, uh, water management, air pollution, uh, CO2 emissions, energy use, uh, used water. For a social aspect, the same would be uh, considered, would be a staff, a staff turnover, wages, uh, equal rights, injuries, mortality, social investment. For the corporate government side, we would be measuring all the necessary uh, aspects of corporate governance, uh, taking into consideration the independence of uh, uh, management board, the experience of management, management board. Uh, uh, moreover, uh, given that uh, we see uh, in, uh, in our country, in Russia, the ecological problems, uh, the ecological issues becoming uh, really uh, important. We all know that we had a big uh, oil spill in uh, Narilsk in uh, the beginning of summer, and the company uh, could uh, suffer really huge uh, fines for this, uh, for this oil spill. We do understand that social uh, program become, uh, social unrest becoming a real issue in this country. For instance, uh, some, uh, some of the um, problems uh, that uh, appeared in Bashkiria when uh, some of the companies were um, stopped from development of the mining assets. So uh, this methodology, this approach, uh, based on global uh, best known information, based on uh, experience of our company that Mikhail has already mentioned, uh, it should be helpful for issuers uh, to defend their position against uh, Western EU regulator, against uh, local, uh, uh, local population, which is unhappy with the development of some of the assets uh, close to their uh, houses. And it should be very, very useful for investors who are currently 
change in their uh, investment uh, strategies, including ESG uh, metrics uh, in their investment strategies. So it seems to me that uh, we have um, really good potential for Russian uh, sustainable finance market to grow. We have signs of this, uh, uh, of this uh, um, growth. Uh, and uh, it seems to me uh, the approaches that Accra has should be very useful for investment to understand what is, uh, what is exactly, um, what does exactly mean these uh, green projects? What does, uh, what is the exact impact of uh, issuers uh, that they have on ecology, social policy and uh, corporate governance? So we would be very pleased uh, to be helpful for investment community in this, uh, in this topic. Thank you. That's it for me. Thank you. Thank you very much, Maxim, uh, Yelena, Dmitry. Uh, we will pass now to the Q&A session. Uh, I welcome all the participants to, to unmute the microphone when they, they, they wish to, to uh, ask uh, questions. I have a, uh, myself um, a question to Maxim. As you talk about the Web RF, uh, which uh, prepared the uh, taxonomy for, for Russian uh, ESG, uh, market and which model uh, russia will uh, adapt because we have uh, okay we have a european model we have also chinese uh, model for for esg standards we have us uh, models what do you i think uh, i think the most uh, applicable model for us is international capital market associations approach which mm. is ba which is very similar to climate bond uh, climate bond initiative so uh, the um, approach would be similar. We would be checking mostly the same uh, aspects that they, these methodologies do uh, ch check. And the, uh, what is more important, the uh, taxonomy and the projects which would be el eligible uh, for uh, this green financing would be in compliance with uh, Climate Bond Initiative and ICMA which is much, uh, much uh, more strict approach than those used in China. And that means that uh, for, most of the, uh, for most of the green bonds uh, issued in Russia, labeled green based on uh, web uh, methodology, which is also similar to our methodology because we are uh, highly co cooperating with, we were in high cooperation with VIB, and our, um, our own verification should be also verified by that. This is an option. So uh, those projects which have this green label from VAB or RACRA or other Russian uh, rating agencies should be definitely uh, eligible for European investors. Uh, unlike the situation in China, where we know that uh, there were some projects and concern, uh, connected with uh, coal industry, for, interest, for instance, which were uh, green in Chinese understanding, but they were not uh, applicable uh, for European industries. Thank you. Thank you very much, Maxim. Uh, if someone have a questions, I do not see any microphone unmuted. Finally, if there is no question, that means that everything was very clear, explained. Uh, I would like to also ask uh, Yelena, Dmitry, and Maxim if uh, you can share your uh, presentation uh, with us that we share after with the participant. Yeah, sure. Well, no, no question at all today. <laughs> 